Hello, Sebastian Lacido here, and welcome to Headlines and Prophecy. I'm going to open with the scripture in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. It says, Now as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So they asked Jesus three questions. One, uh, one of the questions uh, isn't answered here in Matthew 24. It's answered in Luke 21. But the second two, what are the signs of your coming? What should we look for? What will tell us that the time is getting closer? What will tell us that it's imminent at the door? And what will it be like? What's it going to be like just before you come back? So Jesus answers them, and I, I want to read the next uh, seven or eight verses. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. So the, the opening statement is there's going to be opportunity for deception. See that you're not deceived. Uh, verse 5, For many will come in my name and in the name of Christianity and say, I am Christ, I am the Anointed One, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And he uses something in verse 8 from the human experience, which is when a woman goes into labor, uh, her labor pains get closer and closer together, but they also get more severe uh, you know, and, and, uh, until she brings forth a child. And so he's saying that the new cycle is going to be filled with these things, wars, rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilence, famine, earthquakes in various places. In other words, these are going to come closer and closer together, one on top of another, as we get closer to the return of Jesus. But he also says that, you know, to not be troubled, even though you're seeing this on in the news cycle, you're experiencing this, this in your own life, no matter you know where you are in the world. But he said not to be troubled. This has to happen this way. In other words, God has ordained and is going to allow this to happen this way. In other words, he knows about it ahead of time, and he's telling us it's going to happen, you know, and get ready for it. Don't be troubled by it, but what? But stand in faith, believe in me, keep your eyes on me. Uh, these things are going to come to pass. Uh, what I wanted to really get to today is verse 9. It says, then they will deliver you up. Well, who's he talking to? He's talking to his disciples, uh, verse 3. And he sat on the Mount of Olives. Disciples came to him privately. So he's talking to his disciples, and he says, they're going to deliver you up to tribulation, kill you. You'll be hated of all nations for my namesake. So Jesus is, is giving the unvarnished, un, you know, uh, he's, he's not uh, bringing the language down. He's giving it to him full throttle, you know, with, without dilution. He's saying, there's a time they're going to deliver you up. They're going to, you're going to have tribulation. They're going to kill you. You're going to be hated of all nations for my namesake. He's talking to his disciples, his disciplined believers. So he's basically saying, those of you that choose to follow me, those of you that choose to make me your Lord and Savior, to pick up your cross and follow me as the, as the Gospels lay out, you're going to have, because of your lifestyle, your thinking, your actions, your words, your, your, your paradigm of your life here on earth, the, uh, nations are going to hate you for it. You're going to be uh, an outcast to society. Most will be against you, and our thinking will be uh, in the minority, if you will. And so we're not used to that in our nation. That's what I want to get to as we get through this. He says, and then many, well, many of who? Many who? Many disciples, many believers will be offended. Offended at what? Offended at what I just said. Hated, persecuted, uh, outcast, going against the herd of humanity, you know, uh, not, you know, not being a part of humanity, being hated for our lifestyle. Many will be offended. We see people offended when Jesus taught on, on communion. We see G people offended when they arrested him. They all ran from him. They were offended at him. Uh, they'll betray one another, hate one another. I'm talking about labeled Christian on labeled Christian. Many false prophets will arise and what deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. In this gospel, the kingdom will be preached in all the world for witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, 
Whoever reads, let them understand then. So here, you know, what we just read about hatred, tribulation, uh, you know, uh, persecution, many being offended, betraying one another. This is all before tribulation, before great tribulation. This is not, in, in fact, I can tell you that this is probably occurring now in over half of the world. I would say 60, 70 percent of the world, uh, you know, when you look at the populations of India and China and, uh, you know, the Middle East and, and parts of Africa, you, you, you have closed down society. They're close to Christianity. They're, they're, Christianity is an enemy of the state. And so we just haven't experienced it here. You know, and as I go through this list, many will be offended, betray one another, hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and deceive many. Well, what's a false prophet? If Jesus is laying out this is the way it's going to be, then a false prophet would have the opposite point of view. In other words, Jesus is saying it's going to get, it's going to get difficult uh, to live as, as a believer. You're going to have to have a lot of faith. You're going to have to see Jesus in everything. You're going to have to have an eternal view. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, false prophets will deceive many by making it, what, a, a better message at the end. You know, uh, those that, that, uh, that join into lawlessness or those that are blending into the world, they're, they're joining the world uh, in their pursuit. They're leaving Christianity. So, in fact, if you have a study Bible, this is called apostasia. This is apostating the church. Many will leave to the church. And the most important verse in all of this is verse 13. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Well, what happens if you don't endure? Endure what? Endure what I just told you. He that endures to the end. He that makes the right decision. He that, you know, that, uh, you know, Jesus is telling us this list of things that are going to happen. And then he's telling us you're going to have to endure this to the end. And what? You'll be saved. What happens if you don't? You know, you have to ask the question, what happens if you don't? And, and so, you know, I, and I don't want to go there today. I really want to look at us in our country because in the United States and Canada, most of you listening today are from this area. We haven't experienced this treatment. I mean, we're just beginning to experience this treatment. We're seeing, you know, pastors arrested uh, in Canada. We're, we're seeing, uh, you know, um, uh, other churches censored. We're seeing people censored all over the country that have an alternative point of view. Uh, and, and so now, and this is new in our country. I mean, the, the, you know, the Constitution gives us the right to freedom of speech. But here's the thing. The leaders are censoring the speech. Even when you look at, you know, I don't care where you stand on, on the shot, where you stand on masks, you know, you, but here, no matter where you stand, you should be able to express your own opinion. You know, you should be able to express, you know, how you feel about this. You know, there's a lot of deception out there. I mean, they told us masks didn't work, then they told us masks work. They told us the shot would eradicate the disease. It hasn't, you know, and so those that have an alternative point of view, you, you, just, you just censor them, you just take them down because they have an alternative point of view. I mean, this last week, they, they, they censored John Malone, who actually has the patent on the, on the process of the shot for, because he had an alternative point of view. And so here's the thing. As they begin to censor uh, the Christian voices, let's forget the social issues. I mean, we have wars. Talk about wars. We have Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Iran. These three countries are running joint military operations as we speak in the Indian Ocean. You know, Iran being a part of it biblically and prophetically, uh, Iran is going to come against Israel with Russia. Um, and, and so, you know, this is all, we're in this time. We're seeing the signs. But I think the greatest sign is truth, the hiding of truth. And I, it's not the vaccination. It's not Democrat. It's not Republican. It's censoring Christianity. It's telling parents that, that they don't have the right to raise their kids the way they want to with a biblical point of view. It's teaching them things that we know are against scripture. It's taking those rights away and allowing children who haven't have full developed minds make decisions. 
And, you know, here's the thing. Uh, because we know that Christianity is under assault because of censorship, because of, of a government that, and, and, and governments of the world. In fact, I, you know, when I look at the world, when I look at uh, uh, Macron in France and Trudeau in Canada and Biden here, it's almost like they have a playbook for this great reset, this narrow window that they're looking for. And in their hearts and minds, I believe that they believe that this is the right thing to do. But at the end of the day, you can't take Jesus Christ out of uh, our lives. Uh, you can't remove him from our lives. We, you know, and and by by doing that, you now have set your own nation against God and against the Word of God. And so there will have to be a judgment for that. You know, so you know, and when you look at the policies and procedures of the group that the groups that are in charge around the world moving toward this great reset um, you can see that Christianity is not a part of it at this point and so we have to be more diligent in finding truth uh, we have to be more diligent in, in ferreting through the nonsense and finding the truth we also have to help those like our ministry and other ministries that are preaching truth we have to help them give visibility uh, because we're gonna we're gonna lose out. Uh, this is our censored blog, believe it or not. We have an uncensored blog which uh, is emailed to our members every Friday. So it's, it's this a little more juiced up with what I really think. You can get that by going to our website, watchersoftruth.com, and signing up to be a free member, no cost. We don't sell your name or give your name to any third party. Uh, we do email our teaching notes for our, our Tuesday General Bible Study, which is at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Our line upon line, which is teaching a book of the Bible verse by verse. We're in the book of Revelations. We're starting chapter 12 this week on Thursday morning. Uh, that's not live. It's pre-recorded, but you'll get notes for it. And then our Eschatology and Times Bible Study, which is at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturdays. And then on Friday, you receive uh, what I really think, which is the uncensored version of this. Um, you know, these get censored once in a while, but we try to uh, accommodate staying off uh, topic. This one may not make it, we'll see. Anyway, uh, we're, we're looking for members to join us on our website. We're looking for you to share this message. Again, it's watchersoftruth.com. And then naturally, we're looking for partners and those that would partner with us. We're trying to redo our website right now we're in a, a fundraising campaign we need about 35 total we got about 20 left that we need 20,000 left that we need so we're looking for one-time donations we're also looking more importantly for partners so if we're feeding into your heart and mind pray about becoming one of our partners and with that that's the headline of prophecy for this week i'll see you next monday and god bless you and i pray that god's blessing would be in your lives